テレトビズもうさてプレミアム特別コンテンツですアメリカの著名投資家あのウォーレン・バフェット氏も注目しているウォール街の重鎮に単独インタビューをしましたえ話を聞いたのは日本円でおよそ23兆円を運用するアメリカの資産運用会社オークツリーキャピタルマネジメントの共同創業者で今も経営の指揮を取るハワード・マークス会長ですえマークス会長はですねこちらにありますえ投資で一番大切な20の教えですとかあと市場サイクルを極めるなどの著書でも世界的に知られていまして特にマクロ経済予測を重視しないほぼ信用しないような投資スタンスで有名です今回その投資哲学ですとか今のマーケットをどう見ているのかについて語ってくれました Could we start this interview with this very basic question? Please tell us why the o l d trees Philosophy is also your philosophy is that、uh, you do not make investment decisions based on the macro forecast. In 2016, Warren Buffett said to me, For a piece of information to be desirable, it has to satisfy two criteria it has to be important、mm. and it has to be knowable. I believe that the macro picture. The future of economies and markets, currencies, interest rates is very important, but I believe it's not knowable. And in particular, virtually no one knows it better than others. So my firm invests on the basis of what I consider to be knowable companies, industries, securities, the small picture, not the big picture. Inflation is temporary. That these words most symbolize all the errors of the macro forecast in these one year or two years. Yes. And the Fed and the economists were all wrong you know, in the macro forecast. Yes. And the Federal Reserve, which acts based on their, its own macro forecast, you know, but got their own macro forecast wrong.、Right. And as a result, they could not predict their own. It's own action.、Right. How do we look back on this situation? I don't want to point fingers at the Fed. They have a very difficult job. But I think that the、uh, facts you just described prove my point that、uh, very few people have an advantage in predicting the macro future. The, as you say, the Fed. Can't even predict its own actions a, a year ahead. I don't think that one should bet heavily on the outcome.、Uh, one should understand the limitations of、uh, his or her own knowledge and understand that the people making the forward guidance、uh, also don't know. The BOJ, the Bank of Japan, has all said, also said. Its 2% price target is achievable. But no one seems to have confidence on this will be the case on a sustained basis. The fact that the BOJ has not been able to、uh, reach it tells you something about the nature of what we're doing here.、Mm -hmm. You know,、uh, Einstein said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over. And expecting different results. And、uh, if, if a forecaster has been making forecasts for a long time and has rarely been right, you should stop listening to the forecast. If, if, the, if, the, if a central bank has been targeting a, an inflation level for many years and has not produced it, you should understand that these things are not controllable.、Mm. Uh, the Fed has taken a lot of investors into the wrong directions, but it may be good for the investors who are all wrong and together. And、uh, actually, it's in a sense that they were not the only ones who lost. But at the same time, this kind of situation does, did provide you the good investment opportunity for you? Well, basically, what you're saying is that misery loves company. And, and that's, that's an old saying. Um, of course,、uh, people regret being wrong, 
but they feel better about it if everyone's wrong, which most people have been. Um, I would say that anytime there are expectations which don't come true, the market is likely to have a very strong reaction. Mm -hmm. And those of us who didn't follow uh, that expectation and who uh, have our emotions under control are, uh, have the possibility of profiting from those swings. Let me be clear that the macro focus is just like a uh, tranquilizer, the medicine to suppress the uncertainty or sub depression, and or simply be used to know the, or confirm the consensus, which that uh, you can do make a different investment decision from the other investors. Well, I think that I think that. Uh, uh, the difference is that the people who, who use forecasts, macro forecasts for that purpose, don't realize they're taking a tranquilizer. But there's a quote in my memo uh, which says something about the fact that if, if most people understood how uncertain the world is, they wouldn't be able to get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, our job as professional investors is to live with uncertainty and uh, to avoid the market when it incorporates unrealistic expectations and then hopefully take advantage when the unrealistic expectations meet reality and there's a surprise which causes the market to move too much in one direction or another. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is something to game against, not invest with. I often, I often think of it as uh, jujitsu. Oh. where you use the yeah. energy, energy of the opponent yes. for your purposes. Yeah. And game against mm -hmm. uh, is, is, a, is a good spirit. Mm, I see. You like jujitsu concept. I like the concept. <laughs> okay. I, I don't participate. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. And if you were to name one investor uh, beside yourself, who is the best investor when it comes to the microeconomics rather than focusing on the macroeconomics? I don't follow other investors mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I haven't verified any records. Everybody agrees that Warren Buffett is one of the great investors over the long time. And uh, most of the principles that he has incorporated uh, are principles that, that guide me. And one of the most important lessons in investing is, according to your book and memos, not to move positions so simply. And could you tell us, you stressed it so many times, could you tell us more about it? Trading costs money. You pay commissions. Further, I think that most people trade too much, and much of their trading is motivated by emotion. When they see things have done, been doing well, they buy at high prices. When they see things have been falling, they sell at low prices. This is exactly the opposite of what they should do. And if, for most people, I believe, if they didn't trade at all, they would do better. いずれもすべての項目でマーケット市場コンセンサスを下回る結果となりました。いずれピークアウトの兆しかというような、まあ、株式は、マーケットものすごく反応してきました。こちら一気に円高方向に動きました。145円も割れて144円80銭。大きくですね。I was in the training floor of the foreign exchange company. And actually I was screaming and shouting when I was on live. And after the CPI data was released, so I've seen the massive explosion of the emotions. And for you, that kind of situation is like, you know, just looking at the dust. Right. <laughs> I see. And, uh, and also, but, but lately, the market is so volatile. It seems more difficult to see the future. Yes. And, uh, but it really pains me to ask you the question that is, you know, that is most often asked of you. Where are we in the cycle right now? Where CPI comes out yeah. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is how much money you have today and how much money you're going to have in 10 years. And what CPI did last month doesn't change any of that. The, another important thing to be remembered 
is that virtually any piece of information in our business can be interpreted either positively or negatively depending on the mood of the market. So it's very important not to get into this uh, business of uh, responding to every piece of data. Your question was, where do we stand in the cycle? Yeah. Most importantly, I have to point out to you that the events of the last three years have not been cyclical. This is a unique period in history in which the events have been governed by non-economic, exogenous influences. Exogenous means from the outside. There are always exogenous influences, but in the last three years, they have dominated. And ha most of the events have been non-economic, and the economic events have been enormously affected by the non-economic events. So normal cyclical discussion does not uh, apply, period. Period. <laughs> Now, having said that, everyone believes that the central bank tightening to fight inflation will produce a recession. Most people believe that the recession will occur within the next 12 to 24 months, that it will be moderate in strength and moderate in length. I don't have an independent opinion on that subject, and I know what I don't know. And that's among the things I don't know. Uh, after that, I believe we'll have a recovery, as we always do from a recession. The key is, is the longer term outlook. And when I look at the years after the recession, which matter to me, I believe that economic trend line growth is used to be, is going to be fair, but perhaps not as strong as we're used to. Uh, the uh, climate in the last half of the 20th century was unusually positive, and I think we're not going to repeat that. What seems to be prevailing in the market? Pessimism or optimism for you? First of all, one thing that your viewers might like to understand is my belief that in the real world, things fluctuate between pretty good and not so hot. But in the market, psychology goes from flawless to hopeless. It swings excessively, like a pendulum. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I believe somewhere, now we're somewhere in the middle. Psychology was too positive for a decade. And now we're kind of in the middle, maybe a little bit towards uh, pessimism. pessimism. A little bit, maybe. maybe. And I think that, I, I personally believe that conditions are going to get harder for business and for individuals, which means that the pendulum is likely to swing further toward pessimism. Mm, I see. Nobody knows how far, and nobody knows when. I know, sir. We know you believe that uh, good, most good investments start out uncomfortable. And if possible, could you share with us your, some examples? in the past. So you, your uncomfortable moment, but subsequently it's turned out to be a good investment. What I would say, let me revise that slightly, the best investments begin with discomfort, okay? Um, what's an example? Lehman Brothers went bankrupt on September 15, 2008, on a Friday. I came into work Monday morning, and the question was simple what to do. Will the financial system of the world collapse or not? Many believed it would collapse. There had been losses, Merrill Lynch, Bear Stearns, AIG, Lehman Brothers, and we all know who was going to be next, and we couldn't see what would stop it. So there was a very, very high level of panic. We decided that it was our job to invest. Our, cl our clients gave us money to invest. Everything was on sale. We should invest. We invested $450 million a week on average in one of our funds over the next 15 weeks. 
$7 billion before the end of 2008. That's all you had to do. So to, to profit from the global financial crisis, you had to have two things, money to spend and the nerve to spend it. It wasn't easy, but uh, we did so. Even if the macro forecast proves to be very wrong, it seems likely that the interest rate will continue to rise for some time to come. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it seems to be. But if, if that were to happen, it looks like it would be a tough environment for high yield bonds and uh, distressed debt. But do you see any investment opportunities or the opposite in this kind of situation? I'd really like to take issue with your premise because you say that if interest rates go higher, it'll be a tough environment for high yield bonds because their prices will go lower. In the outside world, we call that a sale. When Mitsukoshi reduces its prices by 20%, it's a sale. Everybody goes in and buys. The smart money, when things fall, and they can confirm that the things still have value, they buy. Why? Because they're on sale. Buffett says, I like hamburgers. And when they go on sale, I eat more hamburgers. And that is the positive attitude that people should have toward price reductions in the market. Yeah. Hard works. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a great honor for us. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you, very much. thank you for your good questions, and no. I think we had some fun. <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much for being patient with my very my no. questions and poor English. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you very much, sir.